What's up guys, I'm back in a video and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up OBS Studio so you guys can do some replay, set up your replay buffer, that's specifically what we're going to be setting up today. And I'm also going to be showing you guys how to make sure that OBS opens up on startup so you don't have to worry about restarting your computer, oh it's OBS open. So you can just hop in a game and you'll be set, basically you don't have to worry about setting up anything and it'll automatically be recording. I'll get you guys with your keybind set up, everything, all in one video. So let's get started. So, um, I know that was really loud, <laughs> but, um, so yeah, so first thing you're going to need obviously is OBS. If you don't know what OBS is, is open broadcaster software. Uh, you can go ahead and Google OBS. I'll have a link in the description just to make it easier. But uh, if you Google OBS, it will show this and then you hit that hit windows or whatever operating system you're on and there you go. So it automatically install, you want to install that and it'll basically run you through an automatic setup process. It'll go through everything. It'll configure all your hardware. If you're recording, it'll ask you, do you strictly record or stream? Then it'll ask you for your resolution. And do you want to do 30 FPS, 60 FPS, or do you want to do a mix of both? Like it'll optimize for 60, but if it has to it'll go down to 30. So once you finish all that, you'll get to this screen. Now you will not have the desktop showing because you won't have any sources. The first thing you want to do is go down here and go to add source and the, you want to add your display capture. That's the first thing you want to do. Um, I already have mine right here. If I did this, the screen goes blank in the recording. I open it back up and we're back. You're going to see like a little inception type deal just because it's recording the screen, which is recording the screen. You know, you get what I'm saying. So um, you want to have display capture. You want to go ahead and add that. And then when you add it, it'll be there and it'll show your screen and everything. And be sure to set up your audio stuff. I'll go through everything with you guys, the settings, stuff like that. So you guys don't get lost. And uh, if you want to add any images on top or a camera, I usually add a camera on mine, but I don't have my webcam currently, but I have my uh, logo right there. And that's pretty much it for this screen so far. Now, the next thing you want to do is go to file and settings. Now here we're going to go through some of the main settings just so you guys can get a feel of OBS, what you need to use in OBS. Now, some of the things that I personally use, I'll go through with you guys. So number one, um, here in system tray, uh, enable should automatically be checked off. But this, another thing that I like to personally check off is always minimize the system tray instead of taskbar. And the reason for that is say uh, every time you minimize this program for example it goes here and it stays on the taskbar and I'm not the biggest fan of that because I like to have a clean look when I'm recording or anything like that so it basically it would be there the entire time and I could pull it back up from down here but if you take off that box it will disappear like it did on my screen and you won't see it so that's what that's number one thing that I would go ahead and check off and uh, that's pretty much it for this screen now, next up, what you guys want to do is if you have any streaming things, you want to set that up, stream keys, uh, it'll basically, I think it gives you a link to, a direct link to your page. You just log in and it'll show you what your uh, stream key is. I know where they are for Twitch and YouTube gaming. I'm not sure about the rest. Output, um, this is fairly simple. Since I'm currently recording, I can't change any of these, but I'll just give you some general tips on what I do. So uh, for starters, the video bitrate and stuff like that pretty much stays the same. Encoder, I keep it on hardware. And audio bitrate, I keep it the same. I don't change any advanced encoder settings. Although I'm pretty sure there are uh, other forums and videos out there that will tell you the best OBS settings. I'm just going to tell you guys how to set it up. But for me, the settings that I currently have work fine. And the video quality you'll be seeing, it's not that bad, right? <laughs> it's just my desktop. So um, recording path, you guys want to set up a custom recording path. I have my own YouTube folder organized and stuff like that. So uh, I highly recommend doing this if you're going to get into YouTube or you're going to get into doing uh, game streams and recording stuff like that. I highly recommend you guys set up a YouTube folder with a bunch of uh, mini like subfolders inside of it. So you don't have to worry about scrambling for your files and stuff like that. Generate name, file name without space, I usually leave un, uh, unchecked. All this stuff is pretty much the same. This will be FLV. I change it to MP4. And you want to check off this box. This is the main box. Now, replay buffer is what we're doing. This is what we're setting up is our replay buffer. Replay buffer will allow you to record the last X amount of time, which we will set right here. So you want to check that off. That's what we're here for <laughs> above anything, right? And then the next thing is it will pull up this other set of settings, which would be the replay buffer settings. 300 seconds, I set my 300 seconds, which is five minutes. I wanna record the last five minutes of whatever I'm doing, so that's what I chose. Maximum memory, you wanna set this 
kind of as high as possible. The reason why I specifically chose 5,000 megabytes or five gigabytes is because that is what Nvidia uh, Shadow Play, when I was using Nvidia Shadow Play, um, that's what it would kind of uh, estimate the size of the file would be if I did the last five minutes. It said it was about five gigs. So, um, I mean, I just went with that. Uh, I mean, they should give enough space for, to let the bit rate uh, do it at once. Because uh, the higher the bit rate, the bigger the file. So you want to have some headroom there. And uh, that's what I was set up. You can change the set, the seconds and the time as you want. If you want to record the last two minutes, you can do 120 seconds. If you want to do the last 10 minutes, you can do 600. You get the point. So um, next under audio, a, a lot of this stuff will be uh, default or disabled. I personally like this hand select each source because I don't want it to default to something that I'm not using. So I personally want it to be, like I said, uh, my desktop audio device is speakers, but when I have my headphones plugged in, my Bose is, it switches. Uh, that, that will usually be here. I haven't said it yet because I haven't been on here with my headphones on, but that'll usually be my two. So when it switches to my headphones, it, that'll be the backup. And uh, mic, I have my mic obviously, so if you guys have a, a external mic, go ahead and set that. If you have a headset mic, you can go through the settings for that. And uh, video, usually keep the same. I had set, I set mine to 60 when we did the startup. Pretty simple. Hotkeys, this is the second main thing. I'll probably have timestamps in the description for the main stuff, but um, this is the second main part. So even though we're setting up the program to automatically start when you start up, so it'll be recording anyway, you still wanna have a button that you can press to stop and start the replay buffer just in case. Because I do know that this replay buffer can take us, it can, it can put a small hit on your system. So you, you may not want it to be running the whole time, but my system, I feel like I can handle it. So I just have it running the entire time. But just in case, if you guys wanna set up a key, a key bind for it, you go to hotkeys and it'll be right here. Start and stop. I have mine set for the numpad asterisk and the numpad uh, hyphen. Um, just the, there were just two buttons right next to each other and I have the start one on the left and the stop one on the right for my memory and save replay this is the main um, key bind you're gonna be using so if the replay buffer is always running when you hit control and Z for me or you can set it as what you want you can set it as one button for all I care but as long as you set it something you remember something you're used to when you press that it'll record the last amount of time that you set under here you get what I mean? So it's pretty self-explanatory. Everything else you can set as you want. I usually have my mic on all the time, so I don't really need push to talk or anything like that, or mute or stuff like that. The show high display capture would probably be a cool setting just in case like, say for example, I'm recording and I check, if I'm streaming, that would be a better uh, use. And I check my email, I'm like, let me check something real quick, I'll be right back. And you hide the screen with one button. Like, that would be pretty sick, no? Or you can hide your image, you know what I'm saying? I don't know why you do that, because your logo probably won't be on the screen, but that's a pretty sick key bind. And I'm pretty sure as you add more scenes, this will expand. As you add more stuff on the screen at once, this scene box will get bigger and it will ask you to put key binds to hide or show those things that you add. So that's pretty sick. And then last but not least, under advanced, uh, you really don't have to worry about a lot of this stuff. Uh, I don't think I've changed anything here, so I would keep all of this pretty much the same. And that's it for your settings. Now, you'll, you should see start replay buffer as a, as a button right here. You can go ahead and start that as you want and you're basically done so if you want to start recording you hit this button and then you just go do what you want and it'll always be on until you completely close out the program which you have to do hitting x and then closing it out because if you minimize it it'll just bring it down here see what i mean so uh that's that the next part of this video part two is to show you guys how to make obs studio start when you boot up your computer so you never have to worry about the replay buffer not being on so you can always count on when you you can just turn on your computer with the peace of mind that it's already recording i can hop in a game i can play Ooh, something cool happen i can hit whatever my keybind is and it'll record with no problems to my folder that i set it to i'm going to show you guys how to do that right now so um, when you set up obs it should show a shortcut on your desktop if you don't have a shortcut on your desktop you can go to the uh install path which is usually uh your C or your main drive, program files, not program files, x86, depending on where you installed it, OBS, bin, 64-bit, if I went too fast, I'm sorry, I'll have, I'll have the path in the description, OBS Studio, bin, 64-bit, OBS 64-exe. You wanna, if you don't have a shortcut, which you should, I do, but if, if it didn't make you one, you can just right click this and hit send to or create shortcut, and create shortcut, that would be easier than just hitting this because then you'd have to copy it over. 
So now that you have, excuse me, now that you have a shortcut on your screen, the next thing you wanna do is right click on it and hit properties. Now, as you can see, you'll see a target type, you'll see target location, and you'll see target. Uh, what you want to do is go to target and at the end you see I added um, past it past the last um, quote or symbol I guess you could call it I put a space and then dash dash start replay buffer all you have to do is copy this I'll have it in the description and just paste it after it when you put that and hit apply hit OK it'll basically start the program um, with the replay buffer when it's when it started it'll automatically start the replay buffer when the program is started now the next part in this is to have the program started because although it'll start the replay buffer when the program starts if the program doesn't start until you tell it to what's the point you know what I'm saying so the next thing you want to do is go to here actually no you just hit Windows E and it'll just pull up the file explorer and you want to go down in the description below. I'll have the path to your uh, startup folder. You can just copy that and paste it right here. Right here. And here's your startup folder. So basically, once you reach this point, all you have to do is take that shortcut that you already set up and copy it. And you want to paste shortcut into this folder. And once you put it into this folder, it should show up in your task manager under startup which we'll go ahead and go to right now. So you can go ahead and minimize this just for safekeeping. And you wanna go ahead and open up your task manager. So you can do that one of two ways. You can control alt, delete it, or I know I spelled task wrong, but <laughs> you can go into your search bar and type up task manager. I personally like to have my task manager on my task bar, as you can see down here, and also on my desktop, just so I can get to it easy. Um, but yeah, once you get to your task manager, you wanna go ahead and go to the startup tab and you want to make sure two things two things are good number one make sure obs studio is there and number two make sure it's enabled now usually when you copy a program to the startup folder it'll already have it enabled until you disable it that's kind of how the startup works so once you make sure that it's there and enabled that's pretty much it you've done everything so you set up your your uh, replay buffer you set up your time you set up your file size you set up the folder location of the the file is going to go to you set up your keybind and you've set up the replay buffer to start when the program starts and last but not least you set up obs studio to start when you boot up your computer so basically from this point on anytime you turn on your computer obs will start up it'll already start recording and you can just hop into your game with no worries and when you want to record a clip you can just control z it just like shadow play basically if shadow play was enabled that's pretty much it so uh i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'll have my outro afterwards but uh thank you guys for watching and i'm out if you like this video please be sure to give it a like down below and subscribe if you enjoyed this type of content also don't forget to hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos thanks guys